Hey, welcome podcast family. Welcome to the Maxwell Leadership Podcast, the podcast that adds value to leaders who multiply value to others. This is a very special podcast because we are 200 episodes old. Or wow. young. Wow. And uh, we're so excited about that. In fact, today we're, we're gonna share a little bit of what we've been able to experience alongside of you, podcast family. Uh, we're we're going to share that in this podcast. We're super excited. Now, stay tuned to the end because for the first time, we are going to have a giveaway. We're going to do something really unique, never done anything like this before. And so you're going to want to stay till the end. It will be worth your while, I promise. But before we get to the end, today in studio, John, for the first time ever, you're on the podcast video version live. Yes. I understand that you've been, how long have you been doing the video? Uh, so we are now about four months, five months sure. in, and we have about four to 6,000 every week that joins us by good. video. Good. And so right. you're, you're looking good. You, you look really good. Thanks. Hey, we, we are excited not only for the podcast viewers, but for the podcast uh, listeners. And if you are a listener and you haven't quite tried out YouTube yet, check us out. You'll get to see how good looking John is today. And uh, man, you've been in the studio a little while, and so it's it's good to, it's good to have you today. Great to be here. Hey, well, I, I do want to get started, John, because uh, this idea of two hundred, it's it's got a little special place in our history, right? It's um, it this this idea of two hundred really starts for the United States, but in the United States, the year or the the day July fourth means a good bit for us. Sure does. July fourth. 1976 or 1776 means a little bit more to us, right? I mean, that's that's where our nation declared itself solvent and uh, and we declared our independence. That's right. It began then. 200 years after that, on July 4th, 17, uh, 1976, something significant. Yeah, yeah don't make me any older. <laughs> don't, than don't make you. Don't, 17... don't make me any older. Let, let's say, keep it with 1976. <laughs> yes. Okay? To July 4th, 1976, <laughs> something really unique happened to us that literally changed the trajectory of all of our lives. Take us back to that day in July of 1976. I'll be glad to, Mark. I was a, I was a pastor in Lancaster, Ohio. Church was really growing, and we had a 4th of July parade, and our whole congregation uh, for the town of Lancaster, it's only a town of 30,000 people, uh, we literally had floats and the whole deal for the, for the city. And it ended up in our ch- on our church property, and we had an outdoor service because there were about five thousand people. I couldn't obviously handle the crowd in the in the uh, building, so we had an outdoor service that day on July fourth, two hundredth uh, anniversary of America. And I'm just uh, uh, preaching a message, and in the middle of the message, I very clearly sensed that God spoke to me, Mark, and and said, uh, "You'll spend the rest of your life training leaders." Now, honestly, this had never been a thought of mine. I mean, I loved leadership, but I had never thought about it. In fact, on the way home, I shared with Margaret, I said, I, I think God talked to me. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> and, and she said, well, what do you think he said? I said, I, I think that I'm, I'm to train leaders. And, and she said, well, what are you going to do about that? I said, nothing. Really, if God called me to do that, I think I'll let him open the doors. Yeah. That week, literally two uh, different conferences, called me and asked if I would come, and they specifically asked if I would teach them how to do leadership. And I said I would be glad to, and I responded to those two invitations, and uh, the invitations never stopped, Mark. I mean, they never stopped. It. I just, I fell naturally into becoming a leadership teacher, coach, speaker, writer. It was just what I was born for, and I knew it, and everybody around me seemed to know it. And so it, but it took off on the 200th anniversary of America. And of course, we're on our 200th podcast, but, but uh, that was quite a while ago. And, and look where we are today. Yeah. I, and, and again, I would have never fathomed, never would I have fathomed that that little, that moment, that calling would have led us to where we are today. I, I mean, that's way beyond us. But I would just say to all of the viewers and listeners of the podcast today, just don't despise small things. I mean, I, I think it's obedience to something that is uh, maybe not hugely significant, 
that leads the pathway to great things later on in life. We're we're right at, I mean, that's, um, let me do my quick math here. That was seven, 1976, 30, 40. We're 45, almost 46 years yeah. into that almost. decision. And I don't think you've ever wavered from that moment in 1976. Can you, can you talk to us a little bit about what you're experiencing because of consistently staying true to that calling, yeah, the consistency yeah. idea? Well, I haven't wavered. I, I, I never have. I, it's, I've never had a day or a, an hour in my life where I thought I ought to be doing something besides leadership. And, and, you know, I think about that. We're going to talk about consistency compounds, maybe markets, because I had nothing else I could do. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like if you can only do one thing, you're not going to waver. You're going to stay there. I just said, okay, uh, doors are open and I'll teach leadership. I started teaching leadership. The demand increased that, you know, then someday I've got to write a book about leadership. And then I developed resources for leadership. And, oh, I better get a company started because somebody's got to handle these resources that people are are wanting. And, in fact, all of the John Maxwell Enterprise really was based out of the vision and a calling to, to train leaders. And we really didn't even try to start companies. We just had to have companies to facilitate what the demand was and, and what the needs were. And so, yes, all these years, almost almost half a century, we're still doing leadership. And by the way, I'm more convinced today that everything rises and falls on leadership than I was 50 years ago when I first thought that that incredible thought. I so I, I think it's something to, I think it's something to give your life t- to one thing. And when you get on this side. Look back and say the one thing I gave my life to was worth every bit of my energy, and by the way, it seems more important to me today than when I started. It, it never faded. It never kind of got lost. It, it's just always been right there, clear. And uh, we've been faithful. And then, of course, then for me to see you pick up this baton, take and carry this mantle, and I know that this message of leadership is going to continue on for. Uh, decades now, it, that's even it, that's even more rewarding, honestly, because it's one thing to start something, but it's some, something entirely different to see somebody take your legacy and, and you realize that it is so important that people won't let it down. Yeah. They'll, they'll yeah. still carry that ball. You know, it's funny because I, I know the story, and we probably even told a little bit to our podcast family, but this idea that to impact people you'll never meet I need to do something different. We're going to talk about that in the context of the podcast in just a little bit. But let's talk about it in the context of books. Yes. Okay, so just some fun facts for you, John. Uh, since we started our podcast, now get this, 200th episode, August of 2018, some of you joined us to become our first ever podcast family. And for those of you that have been to every episode and experienced everything You've made this what it is today, sure. so thank so you thank you to much. that. Yeah. We're we're now as as our podcast, uh, we're now over nineteen million downloads. It's a lot of people. One hundred and sixty thousand a week is downloading a podcast and listening to it. And uh, John, it, it kind of all really started for you this idea of impacting others that you you never impacted with books. Yes, it did. Eighty six books. Listen to this. Eighty six books. One hundred nineteen derivatives of those books. So we have 119 ISBN. So if you say you've read everything John's done, yeah. you need to have 119 uh-huh. ISBN's books on your shelf. Yeah, but John, don't, don't worry about that. I don't have that many on mine, so don't worry about it. <laughs> but, but John, just since we started the podcast, holistically, you have sold over 4.3 million books. 4.3 million new hands wow. have shared with your book. Now, just because the podcast, we have seen 190,277 come to our podcast website to get one of your books. Now, here's what that means. 139 books a day, every 10 minutes, somebody's coming and grabbing your book because of this podcast. And uh, on this podcast, it'll probably be every minute. You know I mean? (laughs) It's it's probably even going to increase it more. So (laughs) that's amazing. I, you know, I never even think of those things. You do, you You run the ship, not me, but that's a lot of books. And you know what's so interesting, Mark, is when I started, my mentor, Les Parrott, wrote books. He'd written five books, and one day at lunch, I asked him, I said, why do you you write books? I had no desire to write a book. I loved reading, but I had no desire to write a book. And I asked him, 
And he said, John, I write books to influence people beyond my personal touch or reach. And when he said that to me, I leaned, I mean, I leaned right into and said, I'm going to write books. My whole motivation was to increase my influence and the things I thought and believed beyond my human reach. And so when you start reading those stats and, you know, I don't know, 35, 36 million people have bought my books, honestly, again, at that table, I, you know, I just thought maybe my mother and my aunt and my two cousins would buy my books. I had no idea. And I think that's one of the things I really want people to see. I tell people all the time, I wish they could have seen me in the beginning. Because, you know, beginnings don't start great. You know, you don't start beginnings with great success and fanfare. You just you just start. And you you don't help a million people. You hope to help a hundred people. Yeah. And but if you can't help a hundred people and be faithful with that, you're never going to get a million people to help. And and I just wish that I wish that everyone wherever you are on your journey would be very fulfilled right now. People ask me all the time, I say, well, but you know, 75 and all this stuff happening to you, but you're incredibly fulfilled. I say I am. But honestly, I was as fulfilled when I was in my first church with just a, you know, 30, 40 people there in a little country church. I I was as fulfilled then as I am now. And I think the key is fulfillment isn't how much I have. Fulfillment is me doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Wow. And I think I think if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, then what can be better than that? Yeah. And, and so all this other stuff, it, honestly, I'm grateful, but it is stuff. And, it, you know, it keeps coming, and we're, we're, we're grateful for that. But, but I was grateful when I didn't sell any books. And I was, I was just grateful to teach, a, you know, my first, lead, my first leadership co- conference had 17 people attend it. It was in Kansas City at the airport in Kansas City, Missouri. 17 people came, and the people that were handling the little conference for me told me that, John, you may want to cancel the conference because you're going to lose $3,000 if you go because you don't have get enough registrations to pay for all the expenses. And I, I, I looked at them, and I said, oh, no, no, we'll go. They said, well, you're going to lose $3,000, I said, but I, I'm going to help 17 people. And it never entered my mind not to go to Kansas City and help. But yes, I lost 3,000 people or $3,000 and I helped 17 people. But you have to start somewhere. Yeah. And you just start. And by the way, if you're good, it'll increase. And by the way, if you're not really good, it probably won't increase. <laughs> go from <laughs> 17 people down to two. Oops. You and your significant other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what you may want to say. Maybe this is, isn't my calling or gifting. You know, I get asked a lot, John. And it's so funny when I get asked this question, what's the favorite thing about you and traveling the world with you and getting to start <laughs> businesses with you? Or what's the thing you've learned the most from John? And I, and I always pause because I never want to miss the daily experience of learning something from you. Mm-hmm. But I have to tell you that whether it was 52, 53 when I joined your team or whether it's now 75, what I love about you is your passion to constantly be growing, yes. constantly be challenging yourself. And so, John, one of those was the podcast. Seriously, when we started this podcast, John doesn't do a lot with technology. We laugh about that often. But you said, hey, Mark, just like the book with Les Parrott, you said, Mark, if this is a way to impact people, then I'm in. Yeah, but but, Mark's been nice to me. First of all, Mark had to explain to me what a podcast was. (laughs) So, so, so let's start, let's start with the basics. So, oh, that's what a podcast is. And then he said, Hey, I think we could help some people. And of course now you can tell the rest of the story, but I didn't even know what a podcast was, but that's okay. Relax. But it's okay. And listen, let me, let me tell you why too many leaders, and there's a teaching point here, and I'm going to let you teach on challenging yourself to constantly grow in a minute, but too many leaders, if they don't understand it, they won't do it. That's not you. If yeah. you understand that there is something on the other side that will allow you to Look at people in this camera and add value to them. Sure. You're all in. You don't sure. resist because of a lack of awareness or competence. And so, John, this is a stat for you, okay? Because yeah. I brought yeah. some stats today. That's here. You in the them. month of uh, of November, uh, excuse me, of February of 2022, we had 165,000 downloads a week. What that means is, John, every four seconds of the month of February, 
somebody was downloading an episode of our podcast and listening to it around the world. That's so great. And so I I, want to thank you on behalf of all these people watching, all these people listening. I want to thank you for saying yes to the podcast because you didn't have to. We couldn't have done it without you. What is it in you that challenges you to grow yourself every single day, every single month, every single Well, first, let me take a leadership lesson here from what you just said, Mark. Because I didn't understand podcasts, and when they said, we think that if we did a podcast, we could help a lot more people. Well, I'm all in because the phrase is, we can help a lot more people. I think what I want maybe to just teach on for just 30 seconds is very simple. I think there's a big misunderstanding in the fact that the leadership should know, the leaders should know everything. I, I don't, there are a lot of things I don't know. The podcast, I don't know. I mean, I would have never on my own started a podcast. If, if you don't know what it is, you wouldn't start it. But I think that I wish all of, all of you part of this podcast would, would understand you really have to have good people around you, and then you have to let them lead you. You have to let them speak into your life. You have to let them come and share their thoughts and ideas. And, and, and so a lot of times as a leader, I don't lead. I follow. And I, you know, I follow Mark. I say, okay, Mark, let's let's do the podcast. You get it ready, and tell me how I can help you and how I can serve you. But I think that um, I think of all the things I wouldn't have today if I wouldn't have listened to my team around me. Yeah, and and, and said, I think that's a good idea. And I tell people all the time, the the best idea is the idea that should always win. And and you know, I may have founded some companies, but when I get in with my group and I throw out an idea. I expect everybody to make it better and improve it. And I don't walk out of the room saying, well, you know what? It, they didn't take my idea. We, we want to have the best for the people. If you want the best for the people, you want to get the best people around you. So, Mark, we have a whole team of wonderful leaders and people in our whole John Maxwell enterprise. And so much of what they think about and their ideas and, and, and their initiative and their programs is really what's making us great today. It's it's not like one person's really brilliant and you got a whole bunch of people following around saying, what's next, Daddy? It, it, it's, no, no, you think of another way we can add value to people. And when it's good, we're going we're gonna to take it too. and We'll give you the credit. And so I just love the fact that we have so many wonderful people doing so many wonderful things that have made me so much better. I would never be who I am today if it wouldn't be for all those people. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. You, you say yeah. often that content is king. We're, we're in a world that content, and what I, what I love, John, another thing that I love about you is not only do you never stop growing, you never stop thinking. You, you are a thought leader. And so I heard you say the other day, this has been since your 75th birthday, which, by the way, on behalf of our podcast community, happy birthday. Yeah, I heard you say the other day, you got, I don't know it. You got a, you got 10 more books in you. Oh, I do. Yeah. And so you've been yeah. talking about a couple of things lately. Um, that I'd love for you to just give our podcast family a glimpse into. One of those is Return on Failure. Well, yeah. g- give us this idea that you're working on with Return well, on Failure. Well, really, again, the idea came from you and I having a conversation from one of our John Maxwell coaches. Yeah. Um, and, and you were talking about, about how, how do you get a return on failure? And when I, as soon as I heard you say that, Mark, I thought, man, I have never talked about how to get a return on failure. So I started thinking, reading doing what I do, creating. And so I developed this teaching on how to have a return on failure. And the first time I gave it, the people went crazy. They, yeah. I mean, it was kind of like, I mean, we talk about return on investments. We talk about return on time, but nobody ever talks about return on failure. And I gave them, I think, I don't know, six or seven ways to get a return on failure. And it worked. And it worked so well that I said to myself, this needs to be a book. And by the way, a lot of my books are birthed out of my speaking. Yeah. And, and, you know, the audience, the audience will tell you if it's any good or not. You know, if they're all going to the restroom, you know, probably don't want to write a book on that. And, <laughs> and, and, and so I, I, I spoke on it and it had such a good response. So now I'm working it and it, it, it'll, it'll be a book. And I think I just see it give people such encouragement and hope that they can get a return on failure. And, and my, just, I'll, I'll, I can't tell you the whole thing, but the kind of the thesis is this. What would you attempt to do in your life? If you knew you would fail, but you would get a positive return out of it. Think of all the things that we would do. I, I, it, it's just, I could fail here, but if I do fail, I'm going to get a positive return on it. So that's what that 
lecture book is all about. And you're working on a book right now, and I just want to tease our podcast listeners. I promise you, you will hear these books and you'll hear these contents in upcoming episodes. But John, you're working on a book now on the laws of communication. Yes. And now that'll be coming out uh, either late 2022 or early 2023. Tell us just a, a moment about this communication idea. Well, Mark, you know, I've, I've only written three laws books, the, you know, the laws of leadership, laws of teamwork, and laws of personal growth. And I thought to myself um, in the last year, I thought, I have one more laws book in me, and, and that's on the laws of communication. And, and the laws books, I think, I think that I write them because they are so much who I am. And I thought, I, you know, I wrote a book, Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. And I thought I, I need to take that and go to a higher level now for people who really want to connect and communicate well. So we're, we're, we're developing the laws, and, and we're getting close. Um, I, th- I think they're going to be 19, but, but I'm not really sure yet. But, but we're, getting, we're getting it down um, to the last few laws of saying, okay, this is where we go. And the book will be very easy to write because it's going to be written out of my life, and I know how to communicate, and I understand how communication really works. But I'm very excited about it because I think, uh, you know, uh, Warren Buffett said if he could give a leader one skill, one skill, he said it would be the skill of communication. Wow. He said, he said if a leader can communicate vision, if they can com- communicate the things that they need to instill in their players and their team, if they can communicate well, he says they're going to do really well as a leader. And I think he's really right. So the laws of communication, we're, we're hey, going to have it out. Since our since uh, we started this podcast, you had a bucket list. I've heard you say this bucket list. I've been with you for 22 years. I heard you say this a long time ago. I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. I wish that I could get recognized in this kind of almost academy, this, this experience. And I've got to tell you, on behalf of the podcast family, congratulations on the Horatia Alger Award. Oh that was my. a big deal. That was a big deal. Yeah, it really was. I, I really had, I mean, when people talk about bucket lists, and that's kind of stupid, I suppose, but I only had two really, like, selfish, personal bucket list thing, and one is to be a member at Augusta. And uh, I don't know if that's going to happen yet, but but what the other one, and the higher one was to be a member of the Horatio Alger Award, because Horatio Alger, in the 1890s, uh, turn of the century, wrote books on rags to riches. He wrote stories about boys who, you know, had nothing and they were in poverty, and but they became a newspaper boy. And that, that mm-hmm. gave them the character to be a great person. And and what makes Horatio Alger so important is those books were read in schools by millions of kids. And the entrepreneurial spirit in America, you can point right back to Horatio Alger. And because of how he lifted people, you know, he was always kind of a hero of mine. And, and so to be inducted, there are only 300 members in the world. So to be inducted into that, that was, uh, well, you were with deal. me. That was, was a big deal, wasn't it? It was a big was deal. Fun. It was so that much was fun. fun. Was you know, fun. another thing that's happened, uh, this happened before the podcast, but you had this dream of seeing a country transform. Yeah, I did. I re- never forget Casey Crawford, a very good friend of ours. I think he's been on the podcast before. We'll have him again. But he said, he, he said he came to you one day and gave you his little dream and said whatever it was. And it was big. Casey Crawford's a big thinker. He <laughs> yeah, said, John, what are you up to? And you said, oh, I'm just trying to change a country. <laughs> and I'll never forget Casey going, I talk to most people and they're trying to change their family. They're trying to change themselves. I go talk to John and he's trying to change a country. John, just since the podcast started back in 2018, we had 633,000 adults in two countries in the roundtables. We're now in four countries. This year, we'll be launching five. Um, we now have 1.345,562 in roundtables right now. Right. That's a growth of 712,000. This concept of transforming a country, tell us a moment about that. Well, it's a beautiful concept, um, and it really starts uh, with a table and, and values. Uh, a, a half a dozen people sitting around a table uh, learning, discussing, sharing, uh, practicing good values. Because what we discovered, Mark, you, as you know, that when people learn good values and then they start to live them, they just become more valuable. They become more valuable to themselves, to their family, to their community, to where they work. It, th- there's nothing that lifts a, a person 
therefore a, a community, therefore a country. Nothing lifts like good values, embracing them and living them out. So that's what we're committed to do. As you know, we we're committed to try to get 10% of a, a, a country, the population mm -hmm. of a country, in these tables. At Guatemala, I think we're just about there. We are at 12%. You know, Malcolm Gladwell talks about the tipping point. He says you get about 10%, all of a sudden you can begin to change the culture, and, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. And, and, and we're loving it, enjoying it, and we are we have, what, 22, 23 countries where presidents have asked us that we haven't even gotten to yet. Right. So I think our big challenge is scaling this so that we can meet all of these needs. But here's what I'm convinced. I'm convinced people really want to learn and live good values. They just need somebody to bring them to them and show them how to do it. And that's what we do. You know, you, you have said since this podcast started that you look at the world and you've become leadership sad. Yeah. And that's because of the degradation of people that we see in the office of leadership, whether that's politics, whether that's religion, whether that's sometimes business. There seems to be that taking advantage of people is the agenda rather than lifting yes. people up. And it's made you leadership sad. Well, what happened from that, maybe it was Horatio Alger, maybe it was other things. You said to truly change the trajectory of values-based, people-centered, servant leadership, we're going to have to go young. Yes. We're going to have to go to kids. Of course. And so, John, this is a new number for you. But since the podcast started, when we started in August of 2018, we had 29,500 teenagers in our values-based roundtables because now that's a part of it. And you began to challenge us and, and, and encourage us, inspire us. We've got to do more. We now have 2,165,831 wow. kids in the middle of a school day all around the world, now even in the United States. We have them in roundtables because you challenged us. We've got to go younger. What is it within you that recognized we've got to begin focusing on young people if we want to change the trajectory of leadership. Well, I think that, uh, first of all, I think the of the eight streams of influence in any country or culture, education is the mainstream. Because they get the two reasons. They get the kids early, so you begin to put good stuff into them at an early age so they have a whole long life to live it out. But secondly, in education, that's still fairly governed by the local community. So there's a, an accountability there. So we said, in fact, when I was talking to my writing team, I shared with them that uh, I probably the most important writing that I'll ever do are not all those 80-some books that I'm known for or whatever. Probably the most important writing I'll ever do is the curriculum for kids that they can have in school. And it is curriculum in school. It's not before school, after school. It's with language. It's with math right there. And uh, so we started that journey. Now we're 2 million plus. But we are seeing... The greatest momentum I think we have in our any of our organizations is this momentum to teach values to kids in schools. Yeah. And and we're starting to see it build even in America, in the public schools. But I, I, I would believe in the next uh, three, four years, that two million plus kids could very easily be 50 million. I, I, I think that, um, I think it's a recognized need almost by everybody that kids if we could just teach kids some good values, we're going to just give the next generation great hope. You, I want to finish up the podcast, and then I promise you we've got a giveaway that I, I'm excited to share you about. I want to finish this talking a little bit about legacy, John. Truly, the magnitude of opportunities that come our way is pretty significant now. But you determined a long time ago that legacy is not going to rest in a human being. It's not even going to rest in the next John Maxwell. It's going to rest and give an, an essence, a, a calling, a purpose into the hearts and minds of other people. And so books are a part of your legacy, obviously, podcast. We also have the John Maxwell team. And in, uh, tw in, in 2018, in July of 2018, when we started, we had 20,000 343 coaches in August of 2018. Today, we're at 42,813 wow. in 165 more, countries. We more, more than, than doubled, doubled. Mm, since great. the podcast started. Those are those legs to legacy. It is. Yeah. And so I, I do, I want you to talk just a minute about your vision of empowering people like that's watching this podcast or listening to this podcast or your coaches what is it in you that wants to instill in others 
the ability to do more than they ever thought they could. That's, I'm so glad you asked that, and I, I'm so glad I can have maybe a minute or two just to talk to you about it. Jack Welch, who was the CEO for General Electric, and in his day as CEO, probably was the most recognized as far as the the greatest CEO in the world. He and I were having uh, some time together. And he said to me, he said, John, you want to make sure that you put your legacy in people, not, not just in an organization or a program. And uh, it was out of that that I came away and said, I, I, need, to, I need to have legs for my legacy. And, and that's how we started the John Maxwell team. They, they were to be those, those legs. They're, they're moving the, the principles that we teach. And that was an incredible, great decision that we've made. And then we came behind that when I wrote, as you remember, a year ago now, Change Your World. And Change Your World is a book that I hope, I hope all of you have this. If, now, if you do not have Change Your World, please get it today. And here's why. I didn't say change the world. I said change your world. And when you pick up this book, it is the most enabling, empowering book I've ever written. And what I hear from people all around the world as I travel now is I picked up Change Your World, and it changed me. And it changed them because all of a sudden, Mark, they said I can make a difference. I think high morale is saying I make a difference, and I think low morale is saying I can't make a difference. And Change Your World, when they start reading that book, and I said, hey, could you just start a table with a half a dozen of your friends and start talking about these values? I mean, all the material that we give is totally free. It's online, but but could you could you just start where you are? And it's just given people initiative and hope and energy to get going. And that's why I think that we're seeing such a terrific, uh, kind of like a, a a groundswell, literally from the bottom up of people who are just saying, "Yeah, I can, I can, I can change my world. I can, I can take my community and make a difference in it." And that's what we're seeing, and that's why it's so exciting. And so the legacy of of transformation begins when people believe that they can be part of that legacy and they can be part of making that difference. And every one of you can. You're part of not only our podcast family, but just be part of everything that we do. But but change your world. Please do yourself a favor. Just just get the book, read it, and when you finish, you'll say, yeah, John, he's my friend. And because we have a great team, I can go ahead and tell you this. That was spur of the moment. But if you'll go to the show notes of the podcast, you can click on a link there, use the passcode or the promo code, change your world, and we'll give you 15% discount on that book today. We'll give you 15% discount for you to order that book and 10 more for your team. Take your world, your community That's through good. that book today. We'll make that discount available to you. John, my commitment to you on behalf of this podcast family, on the 160,000 plus that'll view in today and, and, and watch this episode, my commitment to you is this podcast is going to be a part of your legacy. Yeah. We, we, I'm, I'm looking at your podcast, fam. If you're, not, if you're only listening, you're not looking me in the eye because you're only <laughs> listening, but I'm looking in your ear. <laughs> we are going to be a part of your legacy, John. Yeah, you sure are. You know, the other day I'm reminded, and you guys are so kind to us. You send us comments and notes and posts and Tell us how we can get better. Some of you tell us that we're already really good. We know you're just family, so we, we take those compliments. But, John, the other day, Jake uh, Decker, our producer, got an got a interesting comment. said, I wish that you could make the podcast available by phone. We don't have Wi-Fi in my community. We're unable to listen to it. I've got hundreds, thousands of people that I want to impact with this podcast. And I just don't have a way. And so Jake, being Jake, who he is, just making John us, where our le he's our yeah. legacy, he went, we'll figure it out. He created a phone number that you can call in and listen to the podcast by phone. You're now, kidding. that sounds like the way you and I consume technology. Yeah. Pull out the rotary and <laughs> hey, dial the phone. Watch it now. And so, and so <laughs> Jake made this available, and now Fantastic. in the show notes— there is a phone number for anybody that doesn't have Wi-Fi. You can call in old style phone and listen to our podcast. So here's the best part of the story. So Jake executed on it within a week, found a way to do that. So all around the world, you can call in and listen to the podcast by phone. And so Jake, Jake gives the, the gentleman the number and he says, but just out of curiosity, where in the world are you listening to the podcast where you don't have access to Wi-Fi? 
So the guy replies, I'm actually in Ohio in the United States. And I get to be a part of a large Amish and Mennonite community. And they need a way to listen to the podcast because they love John. They love leadership. They, we do not have access to Wi-Fi. And so, John, we couldn't be more excited and humbled that we get to be a part of this community. And if you're calling in today and listening to the podcast, you and thousands, hundreds of thousands of others, we're so glad that you're a part of the podcast. Now, John, before I close out and give everybody a chance to take advantage of our offer today, um, you, you, I asked you to put together a list, John, of what's happened since our first episode to our 200th. Anything else that you would like to share? Any any things that we've been able to accomplish or anything you would like to share as we close out? Well, today? you know, it, so many good things have happened to us, and I'm just so grateful. You went to Saudi Arabia with us yeah, so that we could help that country do transformation. You were in Boston with me when we did history with Doris Kearns Goodman. My gosh. Uh, I got to officiate the wedding for Jeezy and Jeannie Mae. That was yeah. that was a blast. And then you were with me the other day when I spoke for Chick Fil A for their national conference, and and I, they wanted me obviously to speak on leadership. And I got on my knees and begged them to get a Chick Fil A closer to my house. I said <laughs> I've got to go thirty minutes for to get my Chick Fil A, and you got to get something closer to it. You know, just the other day I was in Nashville speaking to uh, thousands of donors for Boy Scouts, and, and uh, Amy Grant was at my table, and we had the best conversation about hymns and, and, and why we loved hymns so much. And I did everything but ask her to sing me a hymn. But, but then, but, but then she, she told me how to get her hymns on Legacy, and, 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 and I did, and that was fine. And of course, we had our 75th birthday just this last week. We, we were with... Uh, Colin Sewell, our wonderful friend in Odessa, and Tim Tebow and Andy Stanley, you and I. Remember we had a three-and-a-half-hour dinner just, just talking about things that will help and make a difference for people. So I just, I just want to say 200 years, and, uh, or 200 years of our nation is where I got my calling, and then 200 podcasts, and here we are. And what I want the listeners, the viewers to know is that with Mark Cole leading the way now, I have no doubt that our best days are still ahead. Mark, you have taken this podcast like you've taken all of our companies, and you just are making making us better, making me better. And it's so much fun to realize that this is 200, and this isn't the ending. This is 200, and we just kind of got on the launching pad. We're, we're, we're just ready to, we're just, we've got a foundation to really take off now. So. I hope all of you in your life have the opportunity and the privilege to hand a baton off to somebody as capable, committed as, as Mark Cole is. So my greatest joy isn't what I've accomplished, and I'm grateful, but my greatest joy is to know that that's just a foundation for what's going to be accomplished. It's, it's just the beginning. And so uh, get, some, get some good legs like yeah. Mark and the team, and, and uh, we need you. We really need you. We need you to be coaches for us. We need you to get involved with us. We, we really do. I mean, my, I'm glad we get to be with you on a podcast. It'll be so delightful when you're part of our family, when, yeah. when, when, you, when you join us, when you become committed to becoming a coach or you become committed to just being a, a, a more active part of us because we need you because we are really wanting to uh, change the world, and, and we just need you to help us, and you will. I know that. You know, if you want more information about becoming a Maxwell Leadership Certified Team member or pick up a Maxwell book or see more podcasts that we have, you can go to maxwellleadership.com. We've simplified it, John. It's just one place you can go Thank to, maxwellleadership.com. But, you know, you said something about the future of the podcast. You and I just got a text this week from our great friend, Liz Wiseman. Yes. We're going to start bringing Love you. Her. We're going to start bringing you talent, leaders that are yeah. doing things the way that John would des- believe should be told to the world. And we're going to start bringing people like Liz Wiseman and others uh, oh. to the podcast uh, to help you, we hope. We know we actually will. Let me, let me say this, John, just as we close. I promised you that we would do something special for you. And so uh, we're going to celebrate the big 200, the big Maxwell Leadership. This is our biggest giveaway so far. And um, 
We wanted to add value to you because we feel like you've added so much value to others. John did a brand new digital course called The 21 Law, Irrefutable Laws of Leadership recently. Now, you've been yes. in studio the last couple of days at this recording, yes. reading the 25th the edition of yeah, the, the book. book. Yeah. But we have a digital product, and it's worth $199. That's what we charge. Go to maxwellleadership.com. It's there. It's an incredible 21 series lesson curriculum that will help you grow on the 21 laws, which is now sold. Is that three and a half million? Yeah, three and a half. Who's and counting? Who's but counting? We are. 3.6 million. But here's what this $199 product is going to happen for you on the podcast today. We're giving it away free. Wow. For the first 200 people that respond. So if you'll go to maxwellpodcast.com forward slash 21 laws, that's maxwellpodcast.com forward slash the number two, the number one, the word laws. 21 laws, the first 200 people that will sign up will get access absolutely free. What do you think about that, John? I think that's big. We need to hurry up and go go to that website that's and get, exactly. it, get it for free. I would do it myself if I knew how to. <laughs> would, would, you, would you get this for me? I'll this work on it. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for being here, John. Thank you for being here. Love you, buddy. Uh, we love you on the Maxwell Leadership Podcast. Thanks for being a part sure, of our family. And until we meet again, let's lead because the world deserves good leadership. Absolutely. Hey everyone, Jake Decker here, the executive producer of the Maxwell Leadership Podcast. I just wanted to emphasize what Mark and John said earlier about our giveaway to the first 200 listeners who sign up for the new 21 Laws online course. Not only will this course be 100% free to the first 200 people who sign up, but the course doesn't even release until August, which means those who sign up will get access before anybody else. The rest of the world will just have to wait a few more months to take the course. So be sure to take advantage of this gift from us to you at maxwellpodcast.com forward slash 21 laws and be sure to leave us a comment in the course let us know what you're learning tell us how you're using what you learn to add value to others we hope you enjoy this course and if you happen to miss one of the first 200 spots do not worry we may just be announcing a new way for a few more people to get free early access to the course in one of our upcoming episodes. So please keep your ears peeled if that's even a thing, and we'll see you in our next episode.